Hey guys, it's Boonie. Um, I know it's been a couple weeks since I've made a video, so I've been trying to gain some momentum or energy to um, follow through with some things, and um, I missed you guys. I, I apologize, and I'm, I'm back for a little bit. So there's this question that I saw in one of my comments on a video, and I don't think I answered it. I said I would, and I didn't, so I apologize for that. And I, um, It's about what can an EFP do when they're feeling uninspired, or um, or just feeling stuck, and I think that this is a pretty common thing for all preferences. And um, while it can be a little different depending on the preference that we're talking about, on each person's um, their individual stages of change and how they deal with conflict um, or um, working through change, um, specifically with ENFPs, and you know my Enneagram is four wing five. So um, there's little things to consider, but in terms of um, a preference similar to me, there are some things that I can offer. And again, um, excuse me, these are things that you can take with a grain of salt. These are some things that you can either um, take as one opinion and one perspective, and then also do research with others who might have similar experiences or different perspective of what you can do or should try, right? Um, please explore as much as possible. You know, my answer might be different and counter what you think you should be doing. So you don't have to take my words as, um, as authority, you know, just I'm answering questions with how I think things have gone for me. And maybe if it will work for you, you should see if it will work and then let me know. I never want to tell people what they should do, um, just offering insights and perspective. So after that um, disclaimer, I uh, will share that with my process with feeling stuck. Um, so some things to, to rule out if you're um, extremely tired or lethargic and not really feeling like doing anything, you know, um, there's a couple things. Some things you just have to sit with and be okay with doing nothing. And that's really hard. Some of us have been taught that um, there is only goodness and there's only self-worth when you're doing something, like physically moving and have an output. You have to create something. And that is just not fair for a lot of us who have a need for processing, a need for introspection, a need to reevaluate what our values are and if our actions are aligned with what we're doing. A lot of us need that break. And so while we're doing that, we might need a series of ebbs and, and, and flows of like, is that, that's not even ebb and flow. I'm not even doing, know what I'm doing. Like, it has to be um, a continuum for us of ups and downs. Sometimes it's highs and sometimes it's lows. And sometimes we're steady for a little bit. And that's just the nature of us. Like there is this invisible list of things to do that tells us we need to have a linear path that's consi consistently creating an output of things. And that's simply not fair or true for most of us. No one lives off a list. To live off a list would be unfair it would be robotic it would not be fulfilling to have a list and just check stuff off because other people seem to be doing things at that time other people seem to be checking things off at a similar time that you're supposed to be but maybe you're not maybe you don't want to maybe you're not ready there's a lot of questions to consider and a lot of life components that are part of your story that should be honored too. So if you're an ENFP and you're feeling stuck, the first thing that I have done with my process is to honor that stuckness. But if it's like financial stuff, I know it's hard. You know, what can you do if you just want to work for a purpose and you're not making ends meet? So when it comes to that, you got to figure it out, like how much of doing nothing and feeling stuck will give you that piece of figuring stuff out while you're struggling financially. You know, sometimes that consequence is something that you're going to have to deal with and accept. You know what? It's not the ideal consequence, 
that you want. You know, you don't want to suffer financially. So, you know, people keep not people got to work, right? People need to pay the bills. But if you're stuck and there's nothing you can do right now, there has to be sort of this um, internal processing of honoring and, and being okay with like, okay, this is my choice to be stuck. This is my choice to do nothing. So I have to be okay with the consequence, even though it can be negative, like a negative feeling or negative, you know, like this frustrations or like wishing you could do more, but you can't. You can still accept that this is the choice and the frustration is going to be there. And this is the negative consequence of not having money at the moment. And I say money because it might be a typical struggle to figure out what, what you want to do with life and work and money because that's a very idealist thing <laughs> to not know is it worth it to to do the grind for a while and so um so that's part of it so another part would be what are the options then can you put these values to the side for now because we're long-term thinkers we're big picture thinkers the end goal is going to be something phenomenal it's going to be a cause that you champion and you're going to be helping a lot of people or you're going to be helping yourself in a way that helps whoever you think your community is and that is important that's a part of you and your moral code so if that's something that's something that you want to do for the long term you know somewhere down the road you're going to you're going to create this purpose. You're going to help others in your own way. You're going to be creative somehow. You're going to have this piece of beautiful artwork that you're going to contribute to society that's going to resonate with so many people and, and the human condition, all the pain and the suffering and the joys and the beauty and the awe. Can you work or can you do the thing that's grinding and that thing that you don't want to do for now while knowing that it's going to be the greater purpose. That's the thing that I, I want to instill upon ENFPs who feel stuck sometimes, who feel like work isn't authentic. You feel like you're a cog in the machine and it's just draining every day to do this rote stuff. Like it's not novel. It's not purposeful. What can this potential draining and rote job do for the future for you while you're preparing and gaining skills because somehow this job is going to teach you a skill that you can apply to your dream okay whether it's being consistent whether it's being um, accountable for something whether it's waking up every morning at the same time when you don't really want to do it you know getting bills paid these skills can be applied to your dream so even though it's not authentic to the dream, they're tools that are building a foundation for your long-term dream in the future. And that is something to change perspective. And I'm not saying it's going to be easy to do because no way is that going to be easy. You're an idealist. You want to change the world in big, big ways. You want to share ideas. You want to catalyze thought. You want to catalyze change and motivate people to believe in the best part of themselves. Having a daily grind job of nine to five, being tired when you come home and not being able to feed into your dreams and nurture that part of you, yeah, it's going to be draining. But maybe listening to me talk about this and understanding that, you know, it's not ideal for you at the moment, maybe that can help you continue a little bit more. I'm not sure what you need at the moment because that's your individual story. It's your individual journey to figure out, you know, trial and error, asking for what you need, getting it, and then figuring out if that's really what you need, you know, and keep on going, and then refocusing on that goal. So if you're stuck in a rut, kind of back up a little bit. Separate yourself from the struggle. Honor the struggle, but separate from separate yourself from it for a little bit to think about what is it that makes me want to wake up every morning. What, are that, what is that thing that I wanted to do when I was younger? Was it that manuscript? Was it that musical piece? Was it that performance? Was it that book I always wanted to write? Was it that comedy performance? Or being an actor and actress? Or, or fighting for others? Was it motivating others? Was it healing others? 
I don't know what yours is going to be. Maybe it's a little bit of everything. But remind yourself that, you know, you have that spark. Other people, you know, they might be okay with that. Other, might pe other people might be okay with simply being. And that is an honorable way, too. But maybe for you, you want something bigger. You want something more. Maybe it's traveling. So just tap into that and think about it. Some things that you could try. Um, a vision board. Sometimes we need to see as reminders what we're living for. It may not be the thing we're living for at the moment, but sometimes we need reminders to change our thoughts and our language to remember that we do have meaning, we do have purpose. And we're going to slowly get there in our own baby step kind of way. You know, no one can tell you what your pace is going to be. And sometimes you're going to have lulls where you do nothing related to your dream. And that is okay. Okay? Sometimes we have to honor that we do nothing right now. Sometimes we honor that we do normal routines. Because again, people do need to eat. You've got to pay for the bills somehow unless you want to get off the grid. That's your choice. It is an option, but to do something with um, calculated risk, right? So um, those are some things I can offer you. And related to the fact of building momentum when you feel like you're ready, but you're questioning this, right? So that's a good thing. You're questioning that you're stuck. You're questioning what you want to do at the moment. So some things you can do is to research on the stages of change. It's something that I'm very curious about myself because for me, I see life as constant cycles of change no matter what part of your life it is over and over again you're dealing with change you're dealing with loss you're dealing with grief you're dealing with forgiveness these are all stages of change and a readiness to let go from one part of life and be brave enough to challenge this fear of the unknown and that's really really hard so um, something you could try to explore would be um, reading about the stages of change just to see where you're at. Because it'd be curious to see where you're at because this wanting to change and, and your language too and your actions will reflect your readiness to change and, and get out of this rut. Um, I don't push for therapy for anyone, but if you feel like you might need someone to talk to, you know, a therapist might be able to just chat with you to see where you're at and offer additional resources. So I just want to throw that out there. Always want to do that if it's possible. Um, again, you can go through insurance if you cannot pay uh, private pay. Insurance might help and there might be low cost or sliding scale depending on where you're at. Some colleges offer low cost counseling based on your income and some agencies might do the same thing too. So it's, it might be interesting to look those up. And if you're a gamer, there's a nonprofit called Anxiety Gaming they will help connect you with therapists specifically for the gaming population and they could slide as low as $30 and if you cannot afford $30 they will pay for it themselves. So I'll also link that on the bottom if I remember to I will. Um, so also going back to the stages of change sometimes okay so if we're not if we're just we're done honoring that stuckness you know to be stuck it's important Sometimes we're not ready, but we force our just ourselves to do something when we're not ready. And I think that's unfair for you. It's not honoring your process. Some people might take longer, but that is just this frustration of racing and comparing ourselves to other people. Sometimes our process is just slower and that's okay. Because if we keep on fighting against our process, we're going to take even longer because we're trying to live in the outlines of someone else's story. You're trying to follow someone else's journey and that's not fair for you if you need to take longer to figure it out take longer to figure out stuff but then you know think about the consequences in a rational way where if you need to start you're going to struggle try and find a way where someone can help you out while you're struggling right so um when it comes to that action step um Maybe you just have to do something, even though you're scared of the consequences. Sometimes we're stuck because we're so paralyzed by fear of the unknown. Sometimes we're stuck because we haven't done this before. Sometimes we're stuck because we don't believe we're worthy of something better. So we kind of self-sabotage. We self-sabotage 
where we're stuck and we kind of cycle back and forth and doing the same thing even though we know that the outcome is not going to be good for us. We know it's not going to be good. And yet we do it because that next layer, you know, right over that bridge, that unknown, it has hearts and rainbows, it has potential for novelty, it has potential for you to do your thing as a champion for a cause, but we're so scared because we've never been there before. So we kind of stop. We turn ourselves around, go backwards, and we're comfortable, and we do the same thing because it's known. We're comfortable in the unknown even though it's not optimal for us, but we know what the outcome is going to be. So we continue staying in the same place. But that also means we don't grow. So if we're not growing, we're not meeting our potentials. And some of us need to do that, okay? Some of us need to kind of sit and cycle between the same stuff over and over again until we realize the benefit of change outweighs us staying the same. And I can't tell you when that's going to be. I can't tell you how many times you're going to do the same thing over and over again until, you know, the scales shift to the other side. That's, that depends on you, you know? But as an ENFP who thinks out loud, brainstorms with others, it would make sense for our preference to either type it out share our ideas with others who are willing to listen because again it, us being intense people sometimes it might be hard to find an audience to validate your feelings or experience so if you're in the groups on facebook you know find a small one that i think would validate your experience and see if what they're thinking you know at least get it out there because we are external thinkers we got to process out loud while engaging interpersonally with other people and so things might start settling and again, moving the scales towards change might happen more while we're engaging with others. And so um, the things I have mentioned was to honor the stuckness. If you feel stuck, give yourself permission to be stuck. It's okay. Even if it's longer than other people, understand that sometimes you're going to be stuck then you're going to move then you're going to st get stuck again. That is part of your journey. It's a part of the cycles of change. Um, if you don't think you're worthy of change or you're uncomfortable with it, that might be something to talk about with a therapist. It's interesting to mention this stuff because they can help kind of big picture thinking and kind of long term thinking see where they can help nudge your dialogues to kind of be in aligned with your values and then slowly increase your your perceptions of yourself to be more positive so you do move towards change. Um, and then also the action part. If you feel stuck, you're acknowledging it. I just, again, want to um, share again that that this is a good thing to know that something is off, to know that you are stuck. It's a very big deal and a very big step for a lot of people. If you don't even know that you're stuck, how do you know that you have to change? So this is a good thing. Um, acknowledge this and give yourself a big pat on the back, you know. Hug yourself for knowing that this is uncomfortable and you don't really know what to do. So asking, you know, people is a great step. I'm just going to offer some information because for me, I think ENFPs do well with information to kind of sort through, make their own connections and figure out what this information will mean, the potential of it, implications of it. So I'm doing my part with you by um, providing education and information and possibility for you to do the next step um, to research the stages of change. See where you're at. See um, how stuck you really feel and, and think if you need to honor that part or move towards change. And that might be a therapist and then going into the groups because as interpersonal people, as idea people, as ones who need to think out loud, this is very important, is essential stuff to, to put it all together again. So I, again, thank you for sharing your process. And then now gather more information from other people, see what they've been doing, and then find a way to compile it all together to find out what works for you. And it's going to be trial and error. Sometimes it's going to work. Sometimes you feel the momentum building and sometimes you're going to feel stuck again. Honor that process and be okay. That is not going to be like a slide 
all the way down. You're going to work through it and you're going to find out your way of maneuvering through that stuff. So I hope that helps you. And if you have any questions, you know, just you can message me or um, kind of ask me to elaborate on certain parts, but um, see if any of that stuff helps you. You know, I think for us as um, extroverted people who like to engage with ideas with others and, and just bouncing off with other people, sharing in the groups might help too. And again, if you can find someone in the real world, in real life, who can um, sit with you or just honor that sharing without trying to tell you what to do or trying to fix your problem because that might not help. It might actually cause resistance. Try and find the right person to re be respectful of your ideas and where you're at who won't feel rushed to try and fix it when you're not ready. So I hope that helps. And again, if you have any questions or anything you want me to elaborate on, I might be able to help. So just let me know. Okay. Thanks, guys. Take care.